let's talk about every hiker's second favorite thing. We all know what the first is. So I got a lot of new gear this winter, which uh, I'm really excited about. One of the things I learned on my PCT attempt last year was what works for me, what doesn't work for me, what I actually need, what I don't need. So I was able to spend this winter getting what I hope will be the perfect setup for me. So let's start with the pack. It's a Osprey Atmos AG50. River, why did you get such a heavy pack? Um, well, after trying some of the ultralight packs last year and knowing the gear that I was eventually going to have, plus the camera gear, I just wanted something that was comfortable to carry. I didn't care that even without the brain, this thing weighs almost four pounds. That's fine to me. It just carries so comfortable, way more comfortable than the Exos or the Granite Gear Crown VC. So I'm happy with the pack. Another reason I really like this pack is this right here. Now, a lot of people, it's not really an important thing to have a separate compartment for your sleeping bag and stuff. But for me, my quilt and my hammock go down here. And one of the things I learned last year that worked for me to help get going quick in the morning was to have everything packed up and then just be able to pack up the sleep stuff in the shelter in the morning. Well, all that stuff went in the bottom of the pack. So even if I packed up the night before, I had to rip everything out. Now this way I can pack up the night before, boom, everything's down here to pack up in the morning. So let's start speaking of what's in that compartment. I got a quilt, Aha. it's a outdoor vitals, zero degree, long and wide down quilt. I love this thing. It, uh, wish it packed down a little bit smaller. That's the only complaint I have on it, but I'm going to get a cinch sack to see if that does better. But as far as, uh, construction it's very well made I have no issues with that so far uh, I've used it a couple nights already so we'll see how it holds up long term and it is warm I was debating whether to get the zero or the 15 degree I'm really glad I went with the zero because with the proper under insulation which I'll get into later uh, I was down in the low 20s and I was toasty in this thing so great let's put that over here now also down here goes my hammock and the suspension and the rain fly, but we're going to get to that in a little bit. Let's uh, move on to what else is in the pack. Let's go into the main compartment. Uh, as you see, I did take the brain off. I don't really need the brain and it saves like, I think like seven ounces and I really don't need it. I mean, if it was on there, yeah, I'd make use of it, but I don't need it. So why carry it? Electronics bag. Let's start with the electronics bag. Uh, again, dry sack in here to keep everything clean and dry. At night, the camera and everything will go in here. So I've got my Anchor 20,000 milliamp charger. I carried this thing last year. I've carried Anchor products for years. I have nothing but good to say about them. Never had any issues with them. If I were to upgrade this, it would probably be to one because there's some new quick charge technology with the USB-C that We'll charge this thing in like four or five hours. So I may upgrade to one of those eventually, but it's not high on the priority list. Got a new headlamp, uh, much smaller and lighter than the Big Beast I was carrying last year. This is the Nightcore NU25, I think. NU25. Uh, this thing with the strap weighs 1.9 ounces. It's got red light, strobe red, Low, medium, high, and turbo. Turbo kick on, there you go. And very comfortable, you hardly feel like you're wearing it. And I love it. It is USB rechargeable, so that's important for me. All my electronics have to be able to be charged off of the anchor. So, boom, love it, love it, love it. Now we got some headphones. One of the things that really sucked last year was the struggle with headphones. I either broke or lost headphones uh, with the wire. Um, they would always cut out. Then I got a wireless one that I like. It was uh, two earbuds on a wire and a little volume button and all that. And I cut one of the earbuds off and used the other and I would tuck the other one up there. I know you saw, if you watched my videos from the PCT last year, you always saw that little thing tucked in there and the wire going to my ear. Uh, that was kind of a pain in the butt too. So even though it weighs a little more, I got earbuds. They come in a charger. And if I charge up this battery pack that's in here, it will last about five days using it eight to 10 hours a day. 
so chances are I would never have to charge it, but if I needed to, I could charge it off my anchor. And they're much, much more comfortable, and you barely even know they're there, so I like that. I like that a lot. Even though they weigh a little more than just like a, a wireless, or uh, I mean a wired earbud, worth it to me. And then I've got a couple of different cables, you know, your standard micro USB, USB-C, and then, then there's an extra USB -C, or US, micro USB because I have a couple of things that charge off of that. So that way I can charge two things at once. Little um, med repair kit, toothbrush, toothpaste, couple band-aids, some floss, some ibuprofen, some Nike or some Dayquil, and some um, moleskin and a couple of needles. And that's medicine or you know first aid and repair kit right there boom all right let's move on to camera gear so i'm not going to talk too much about this tripod because i'm going to replace it it's the ultrapod one uh, i'm going to upgrade it to the ultrapod two the new camera is just a little bit too heavy for this one and if it's perfectly flat level it's okay but if i try to angle the camera at all it tips over so then i've got two batteries and a charger one battery there obviously one's in the camera and on top of the tripod is this little adapter, which is really cool. This allows me to slide the peak design clip that's on the camera right into there. So I don't have to screw it on or off. When I want to use the tripod, I can just slide it off of the peak design clip on my shoulder strap. And put it right onto the tripod. And I'm loving the new camera. It is a Lumix G85. And the microphone is a Rode Video Micro. And I have my drone. It is a Mavic Mini. Love this thing. Love it, love it, love it. And I got a set of ND polarizer filters for it. Those really help. All right, now let's go on to cook system. So I got my uh, Sea to Summit titanium spoon that I got last year. Love this thing. Gonna keep using it. No need to replace it. And instead of the little BRS stove and the Vargo bot, I'm gonna go with a jet boil this year um, weighs a couple ounces more but boils a lot quicker uh, it's got the built-in cozy on it the can I can get away with using the small can because it's so efficient on fuel and the can fits right inside of it so it weighs a, I think like two and a half ounces more than the BRS and the, the bot but it takes up a lot less space and it's a lot more efficient on fuel so I'm gonna give that a try and hey, if I end up not liking it on trail in the shakedown hikes I've done, I have loved it. I mean, I absolutely love it. It boils water for a dehydrated meal in like a minute and a half, if that. Whereas with the, the BRS and the Vargo bot, it took me like five, six, seven minutes to boil a thing of water. So I'm going through a lot of fuel. <laughs> Clothes bag. So some new goodies in here. You can see what I'm wearing. This is pretty much what I'll be wearing on trail. I've got the Columbia Silver Ridge. I actually got this one on sale on Amazon, I guess because they don't make this print anymore. It was like $15, and this is normally like a $50 shirt. So I was like, score. A cheap pair of Walmart shorts. Uh, for shoes, I've got my Ultra Lone Peak 4.5s. I know, I said I was done with Lone Peaks, but I heard some good things about the 4.5s, so I wanted to give them a shot because they are like the most comfortable shoe I've ever worn. My problem with them has always been durability. So after about 50 miles and a couple of water crossings, they're holding up really well. The, it would always start wearing out right in here, right off the bat. It's not doing that so far. Uh, the insole still feels just like the day I got them. So I'll give an update after they've got more miles, but at 50 miles, these are definitely doing a lot better than all the other pairs I had at the 4.0s. Of course, in Gingy socks, because I don't hike in anything but in Gingy's, because ever since I discovered them, I have not had a single blister. Well, that's not true. I did get one blister, but that was because I didn't dry my socks out at lunchtime, and that's important. Anyway, let's get on to what's in the bag. So I've got a rain kilt. I got this thing towards the end of the hike last year. This is great because it keeps it off of, you know, where your clothes are and everything and your shins get a little bit damp, but whatever, and your feet are already wet because it's raining. So uh, I really liked it. Uh, hardly even knew it was on and it you didn't overheat like you do on rain pants. Then I've got my uh, Outdoor Research Helium 2 rain jacket. 
that I got last year. Um, it's going with me again this year. Uh, I mean, it has its cons. I don't like I don't like the little bill on the hood because it flops down and covers my eyes. Uh, I wish that it had like a drawstring in it maybe so that I could cinch it here and then the little bill would stay here. Then that would be awesome. I looked at some other raincoats to try out this year and just they just didn't make it too high on the priority, but this may end up getting swapped out eventually. We'll see. And my Sea to Summit head net. I could not imagine what Yosemite would have been like without this thing. A new thing I got, this is another Outdoor Vitals product, the same as the quilt. This is the Loft Tech jacket, they're also known as the Million Dollar Jacket. Uh, really cool. I'm so happy with it so far. I uh, only This is the first trip out with it. It went down to uh, the mid-30s last night and I had just my smart wool uh, base layer and this on and yeah, I was I was fine sitting out by the fire and walking around and it's also synthetic Which is awesome because that means even if it gets damp it's still gonna keep me warm But because of the material it packs down almost as small as down and it's almost as lightweight This is a large and it comes in at 13.3 ounces All right, a uh, nice pair of thick wool socks to sleep in so it's funny. I'm overall a warm sleeper but I've noticed over the last two, three years uh, that the circ I guess my circulation's going bad because my feet freeze at night. The rest of me will be roasting. My feet will be freezing. So these are a must for me. Nice, warm, dry socks to sleep in. Okay, so we got my base layers. I got the smart wool bottoms. Uh, these are really nice and thick, uh, nice and warm. I've hiked down into the 20s in these and been perfectly fine. So I upgraded to these because they're a lot warmer and they have the zippers down here so you don't have to take your shoes off to take them on and off which is really nice because usually you know you only wear these for maybe the first hour of the day while you're hiking and then you're warming up so you want to take them off and then you have to stop and take off your shoes and now you can just take them right off so i like that and i got a merino wool just base layer top it's a merry wool so far so good. It's uh, kind of like a medium weight. It's not really that that heavy, but I didn't want anything too heavy here because I'll have at the very least a hiking shirt and possibly the puffy on over it. So I just wanted something long sleeve, keep me warm. And usually I just sleep in this uh, and if I need it to hike in, I will, but mostly I just sleep in that. These are uh, possum down and merino wool gloves. I found these on Amazon too and I wanted a, just a lightweight pair of gloves to keep my hands warm on them chilly mornings. And these fit the bill. Really, really like them. They're, I've hiked in these down in the 20s and my hands were not cold. And they're really not thick. I mean, you could see your hand through them. So they do a really great job insulating for as thin as they are. So these are a pair of the Patagonia Hurricane Pants. I uh, got these for two reasons. For one, if I really did need rain pants, uh, but mostly just for a, a shell. They're super light. I think they weigh like two ounces. I don't know. I'll, I'll be putting all that stuff in there. Um, but just for, you know, one of those really windy, cool days where, you know, you just wanted a shell on, great. Because I do not like hiking in pants. I really don't. I prefer shorts. But some days, you know, you need that extra protection either from the wind or the cold. So, boom, I got those. And for if it's raining, like, and the kilt's just not cutting it for whatever reason, or, you know, boom, got those too. Or if it's really cold and I want to have my, uh, my base layer on, boom, I can put these on and still hike in the rain. And last thing in here is a uh, buff, because I'm addicted to buffs. I have so many of them. But this one is one of the polar fleece ones. I love it. Uh, I've got it into a beanie right now, so I use that for sleeping in. But, uh, you know, just like all buffs, there's a ton of different uses for it. The bottom section is like a fleece material, and then the rest is just like a, a heavier weight buff, normal buff, but just a little bit heavier than normal. And you can do all the same things with it, you know, headscarf, balaclava, bandana. There's a million uses. You don't need me to tell you what they are. Let's move on to the water system, and that is overhanging in the tree, so let's go over that way. For water filtration, I'm building off of what I had last year. I'm again going with the Gravity Works filter, and there's the dirty water bag. 
And instead of the little screw cap attachment it had to go onto water bottles, or I mean a, a water pouch that it came with, or you could use a water bottle. Didn't work very good with that though. I got the Platypus 2 liter Big Zip Evo. Cool thing about this is I can click the tube right into this and boom, it fills up my clean water bag. And then when the bag is full, I click this tube into it and I've got a little nozzle to fill up my cook pot, water bottles, whatever it may be. And home sweet home for this little camping trip shakedown. You see the hammock. It is a Hennessy Hyperlight. And I've got a quilt in there. One of the things I love about Hennessy, or one of the many things I love about Hennessy, is the built-in bug net. It's got these little clips to hold your sleeping mat or air bubble pad, which is what I have, which is underneath. I'll show you that set up a little bit later. It's got the built-in ridge line, which is super, super handy because it just helps make and hang it a lot easier. And the battery died before I got to talk about this on the trip. This is the Hennessy Hammock Double Bubble Thermal Insulator. It goes underneath of you. You can see it's got these little things to clip it into the hammock to keep it from sliding around too much. And it's a lot thicker than the windshield type material. It's a proper Reflectix. And I like it. It kept me nice and toasty without an underquilt down into the upper 30s. Again, I'm using the Hennessy Snakeskins. I love these things. It's just like a waterproof stuff sack built onto the hammock. Now for suspension, I'm changing things up. Instead of that heavy ass strap and cinch and carabiners, I've got the Hummingbird XL tree straps. It's a one inch webbing that goes into this stuff. I'm not exactly sure what it is. I know it's got parachute material, stuff that they use for parachutes. So it's super strong, super lightweight. And the sling down to here was what came with the tree straps. And one of the things that they also have that comes uh, with their hammocks, but that you could buy to adjust yours is this little button hook thing. So if I lift this up, you can see I've taken what was on the Hennessy and I just did a, I can't remember the name of the knot, uh, did that knot on there. And then this little button here, you can't really see it when it's under tension, but there's a loop. So I can unbutton that and then it disconnects. So really awesome. I'm really loving it so far. It's super lightweight. The strap and these combined weigh a little over three ounces. Whereas my previous suspension system weighed 14 and a half ounces. <laughs> so I'm very, very happy. Plus this is just as easy to use. Uh, so right here, Remember the little Chinese finger puzzle thingies? Uh, I can't remember what, you know, the finger, finger knots. Well, anyway, that's how you adjust this. I can't really do it because it's under tension right now, but you can loosen it up or tighten it up. Really easy. Love it.